Hello, hello. So, uh, in this lesson, we will see and analyze the different ways where we can break the clumps. This lesson will be completely 2D, and then we will change to the software to see from different point of view how you can make it. First, let's create or let's analyze from the same base that we took at the start. So we have a base guide that will be and will be defined by the attra attraction force of our clump. So this will be our main attraction force and main shape of our clump on the surface. So once we know that, there are several factors that can affect a clump and can define a clump by itself. The first one will be the attraction force. So this will be the force. On this case, and most softwares, is called mask. On Houdini, for example, is called blend. And basically, it controls how much force this will attract or how, with what amount of force this will attract the clump. So let's pretend that this is my clump and this force is at 100% or we can simplify this by using a value of 1. So this will be my main clump and this will have a force of 1. If this will have a force of zero, then for example, this clump will have no attraction whatsoever. So we can say that half of the attraction will be a clump of 0 0.5. So this will be my attraction and this will have an attraction of 0 0.5. So the first aspect that we can control is the mask or the attraction force that we will have on our clump. So it's important to have that as our first attribute. So we will have the mask. That's the first attribute that can open or spread the force of a clump. If we look at our references, for example, this little cat that we have here, we can see on some of these clumps that the attraction force can be defined as almost one, as you can see there. We can still barely see a gap on some areas, but still defines as a really squared clump. So we can take for granted that the attraction force will define how much the shape resembles to a triangle or a square. So the mask will basically define how much that shape is a triangle or a square. So now we are talking about basic symmetry on our clumps. And if we look at this and we try to analyze this from a symmetry or from a shape of a figurative point of view, we will have that our clumps actually do behave like that. So you can notice here how they do have these kind of shapey values that you can play along. So it depends and along the way you will find that there are more or less triangles or squares depending or how of how close and how defined the shape is. So this value it's mostly referenced to the mask or the main envelope that we will use for our clumps. I will try to explain the second value at the same time. So we have a second value that can affect the shape of our clumps. And this value will be the forces that we can apply to the strand. So in this case, each strand will define a clump. So on top of this value that will define the shape and the force, we have another value that is not the force, but it's a deformation that we apply and it's completely different and unrelated to either the mask or 
the actual force attraction or even force position. If by any chance this force was here on the same structure, this clump will behave like this. So this is completely different and unrelated to that. And this force of attraction, we call it noise. On Houdini, we call it freeze. And on another type of software, there you have another name, it can be scraggle, can be uh, strays, can be phrase. There are many names that can be uh, defined by these. And we have two main characteristics on how this value affects a clump. The first characteristic will be the strength. And the strength or scale will be how much will differ or will be affected from the base position. So this position will be considered zero. And how many units it will move is considered a scale. So a big scale will move this really far away from the root. So this will be a scale of, let's say this is one. So this will be a scale of one. Now, oh, I did it on the same. Let me just go back so I don't do it on the same. And we can use and scale it later. So this will be a scale of one. Let me just make a more constant shape. So this will be a scale of one. And by the contrary, if we use something like this, this will be a scale of 0.5. And at the same time, we can use different scales to define how much this actually gets affected. So the scale will define how much the shape is going to move along. Apart from that, we have a value called frequency. And the frequency refers of how often this shape or this distortion will appear. So this will be a high frequency and this will be a low frequency. The frequency can be really high and normally this frequency here is called fray. And this refers to the damage or small damage that, that happens through time on the hair. This normally is affected on really a small amount of hairs. And if you saw my hairy Mondays, you will know that this is normally how Afro hair looks or can be really damaged hair. The normal frequency, the mid-level frequency, is what we can see on most of the examples. If we see something like this, you can notice that the frequency of the clumps can change on different shapes. And this is quite abnormal to see such a constant frequency that almost looks like a fake. But it's normally common on mancoons or this type of cats that they have a really, really defined shapes. You can also see here that we have this small shape distortion there. And if you see on this uh, clumps here, we also have some small little amount of noise. So this will be low frequency, mid scale or low scale. This is mid frequency to high frequency, high scale. And this is mid frequency, mid scale. You can also find these kind of effects. And if you look at something like this, that's a clump, but it has a high frequency and a high scale or a mid frequency and a high scale. And most clumps do have a small little bit of this effect on the hairs. There are also some that don't have that kind of noise. And those are really specific clumps that is easier or easy to read along and are quite defined. So the concept of noise normally is present on most of the clumps but it's not present on all. And it's important to know that the variation exists on all the clumps. So apart from the mask, we have 
the noise scale. So we have the noise. And this noise has two attributes, the scale or intensity. And we have also the frequency. So this is what defines all the effects that the clump can perceive and receive across a strand. And this is the basic deformation of a clump. Now, on the next lesson, we will see how these two noises can affect and how when you get this into the clump ones, because remember, this is for any clump, clump one, two or three, they can have any of these effects and any of these distortions. And once we use it, we will see how these effects on smaller clumps can bring the same effect as the mask. And we will research how to break the clumps along the strands too.